There you are. Okay, so tell me about the movies. <laughs> Have they shaped your life? Well, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you to share a movie experience with me. What, what kind of movie experience want, with you? What's the first movie you never saw? Never saw? What the is first that movie I never saw? <laughs> well, when so something I missed? <laughs> yes. Have I seen it since then or never saw it in my entire All life? All right, I'll tell you where I'm coming from. When I was a kid, my family um, went to see Pinocchio. Right. And this was, years, this was a million years ago. But anyway, they left me behind. And we had never, ever gone to movies. So going to see Pinocchio was, like, huge. It was just unheard of that, you know, they would make this trip. And for some reason, they all went. And I was playing with my girlfriend. And, um, you know, and back in the day, there was no such thing as helicopter parents. <laughs> so... They were gone, and then they came back, and they said they had gone to a movie, and I went ballistic, saying, you went to see Pinocchio, and you didn't even bring me? And so um, that was my first memorable film experience that I never saw. And, um, and then my father tried to make it up later, and I think he, I think he took me to see uh, Shaft or something, which wasn't quite the same <laughs> for a little girl. And um, then I remember wanting to see um, Love Story really, really badly. You know, it was like the rage for a teenage girl to see it or, you know, because of Ryan O'Neill and whatever else was going on at the time. And I wasn't allowed to see it because they had sex before they were married. So the option was you could go and see Jonathan Livingston <laughs> Seagull, and I went to see that. <laughs> Wow. So Love Story was also a movie that a movie that I never saw. I mean, eventually I did see that one. I never did see Pinocchio. You've never seen Pinocchio still? So, to no. To this day, you never To this day. I mean, I've you know, seen it's, it's pieces on DVD, of it. You know. Yeah, I could. It's probably on Blu-ray, actually. I'm, the moment is lost, and I yeah, don't want to dredge a young all those girl and you should angry see <laughs> issues. Well, it's, there's a lot of sadness in Pinocchio because, you know, he's, he, he keeps lying, and he keeps his nose keeps growing, and... And then, then they, and then, and then his and Geppetto kills him at the end. So, well, you're not going to yeah. see it anyway. So, uh, well, thanks for Geppetto ruining it for me. Murders his, <laughs> his his son because he's become a real boy, but he's a real boy who's lying. So he shoots him. In the Walt Disney version? Have you ever seen Bambi? They, that Bambi's Bambi's never saw Bambi. I have never. Bambi's no, mother is shot to death by a hunter at the beginning oh. of the movie. These are not, you know, fairy tales are usually pretty grim. Like you've heard of grim fairy tales, so therefore. I mean, Grim Brothers and they're Grim, so yeah, yeah. So well, I know that. I mean, so, so you, it's good that maybe you wouldn't have been really scarred if you saw Pinocchio, Connie. I it probably would have changed my entire life. Yeah, and because you would have thought, are they going to shoot me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Geppetto takes Pinocchio out and shoots him. So at the end, that's the climax. So therefore, you might have been thinking, well, <laughs> it might have been, maybe they knew about that. They didn't want to bring you. You know, like the love story has the, has the premarital sex. Yeah. And then Pinocchio has the murdering of the child. Oh, but it's maybe, not, a, it's well, not a real child. It's a wooden child. You know, and basically it's a wooden child. So they were protecting me. Yeah, maybe they were protecting you. Well, were, I was running the streets of the west side of Buffalo. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what thing I, thing I, movie I missed. I missed, when I was a kid, I wanted to see Airport with uh, uh, Burt Lancaster. Because it was the big hit movie when I was a little kid. Uh -huh. And they said it was too adult. I don't know why it was so adult. I read the book later, but I mm. never saw the movie still this day. See? Airport. But I don't know how, you know, it's, oh, it's, you know, it's terrifying because the airport, it's an airplane being crashing, not crashing, but uh, being taken over and the, 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 and there's a bomb exploded. Have you seen it? Airport? No. So a bomb explodes not. in a plane and everyone's going, ah! Uh -huh. And so it's really terrifying. They thought for a little kid like me, that would be too much for me, the, the terror of the, and plus, would I really want to fly later? My parents were like, well, would the kid want to fly to Disney World, that kind of thing, later? Because we were planning a trip to Disney World at the time. And uh, that's why I didn't go to airport. Because so, there, so I guess a lot of times why you miss something and never saw it is because your parents were protecting you or someone was protecting you. Yeah, well, they kid. had the presence of mind to think that you <laughs> it would instill fear of flying in yeah. you. Yeah, that's what it, that was mm. what, what it was about airport. And then... I, I saw this, but it reminds me of something. I saw Silver Streak with my father in 76 with Gene Wilder, and there's an oral sex scene in that movie. So he's going along watching. This is a funny movie. We're sitting together. Da, da, da. And he realizes it's an oral sex scene. I'm 11 years old. He's thinking, 
He can't see this, so he picks it. Like, let's go, let's go, so like, let's go to the candy counter. But it was because of Gene Joe Claver was going down on Gene Wilder, and he's like, hey, what? and he was freaking out. He's like, what? and he's like, getting, dragging me through the uh, aisle so I could <laughs> go up to the candy counter so I could get some milk duds instead of seeing the oral sex. Well, now would you have even known what was going on? Were you I, old I, enough? I, I didn't know at the time. I was like, like, what are we? What are we what's the big rush? Why are we leaving? You know, why are we? We'll come back in about 10, 10 minutes. I'm like, what? But then I realized as time went by, and I saw it on TV when I was a teenager. Uh, oh, later. Well, I wasn't a teenager when I saw it. It was 11. When I was a teenager, I saw it. I'm like, oh, it was the oral sex scene. So my father was like, ah, wait, ah, ah. I didn't know there was an oral. Ah, ah. Like he just thought it was too. Like he just blew his mind. Blew his mind. Ah. So yeah. Well, you're. I mean, did you get in, in, into acting because yeah, of, of the movies? Um. Well, you know, it was funny because I was think I knew we were going to talk about movies, and I knew we weren't going to be all scholarly about frames no. and who did what. And dollies. And do- <laughs> dolly shots. But uh, so I was thinking about um, people's taste in movies, uh, people that I enjoy, the kind of people I enjoy going to the movies with and the kind I don't enjoy going to the movies with. And my first memory of film, which is interesting, and I was just thinking that on the way here, because I used to, and I think I was only four I just remember, you know, where we lived at the time. So I had to have been four years old. And I remember fantasizing about being Camille. And being, Who's you know, Camille? She's, um, she's the, the dying beauty where uh, everybody is so sad that she's going and there's flowers around her and her lover finally comes to her bedside. <laughs> this is a movie? This <laughs> This is in a movie, or it's, it's a it's more of a famous. It's an idea. Oh, it's more of an idea. Okay. <laughs> and um, where it, it's very old. Actually, the the images in my brain. It, it's not based on any movie I had ever seen that I ever recall seeing. Movies that were made far before I was even actually born, but for some reason they were in my head. So I'm thinking maybe I saw them. You know, maybe I watched reruns. You know, and they printed although I couldn't tell you how. So I did, I did remember wanting to be in film and wanting to wear the silk and the chiffon in black and white film because wow. I just thought that was very beautiful. Right, and then glamorous. the people coming around and me having all these flowers around my bed when I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> so did your and this was at four. So wow, it, it, to me that, but that led and it, it, it just made me think, what, what would we be thinking and who would we be if not for movies? I mean, where did that even come from? I just, I still to this day don't know how that printed, for, you know, my young imagination. Yeah, but the black and white glamour mm-hmm. and the beauty. You know the lit, I mean, the glamour lighting and yeah. the whole spiel. Yeah, I mean, I, I everything I, I do is is based on movies, based on oh, what happened in that scene. I'll be using the restroom, and I'll be thinking, this is just like that scene in a Kubrick movie where the guy was using the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> or looking at, looking at, or looking at himself in the mirror, and I'll think, oh, well, isn't this like the De Niro thing where he's looking at himself in the mirror? That's what I do all day long. Is I'm, I'm not every second, but very often every day, I'll be thinking, how does this connect to a, a movie? Or a TV show sometimes. So if there's a high fluting TV show, I might be thinking. Or even a low fluting one like the Rockford Files. I might think, what did James Garner do in this situation? <laughs> you know, when he, when he lost his wallet at the bar. That kind of thing. Like some, something minor. Yeah. But I mean, you, so you think from, from being wanting to be glamorous and black and white, is that where you want to be an actor? I, I honestly don't think there is any connection. Uh, but I did think about that coming here. Well, I, I mean, I, a, because I, don't, I certainly don't live my life that way. I, I never aspired to be, you know, live that kind of luxury. Um, actually, far from it. But nonetheless, I do remember, th- I remember that more as a f- my first relationship with movies. And then I was thinking about people's, in general, people's relationship with movies and... The yeah. kind of people you want to go to the movie theater with. Well, do you like a highbrow person to go, and, or do you like the lowbrow person? Uh, not too highbrow. High Middlebrow. Middlebrow. But not the lowbrow idiots. I don't even mind lowbrow as long as they don't, as long as they don't say, "Who's that actor?" And now they're all of a sudden, you know, they're distracted by knowing they've seen that act, a yeah. familiar actor in the movie, and then they're like, "You got to go with that? it." I, ugh, if you I don't go that. with the flow. <laughs> Then you're cutting your, yourself off. You just have to, yeah. 
and um, yeah. So highbrow, I find very intimidating because I don't mind discussing the movie and I don't want somebody, you know, getting angry at me for not sharing their point of view. <laughs> well, I mean, on, do, on a, do, you analyze, do you analyze stuff after you watch it? Not really. I just n know whether I like it or not. I mean, I don't. It's a visceral reaction. It, it is, and my tastes vary. I don't. I, it, you know, at one time I used to love, and I'm not that big of a fan anymore. Um, I used to, I used to love foreign films, and I used to, you know, what I didn't, happened? I didn't mind reading subtitles. Yeah, right. Of course. Because to me, it was a way of, you know, traveling. Yeah, you're uh, learning about other cultures yeah. a lot of times in foreign movies that you wouldn't. You wouldn't be if you were just sitting in Buffalo and not watching a foreign movie. Yeah, now I don't want to do the work. I don't the work of reading? Of, well, reading and watching at the same time. Oh, yeah, because it's, double, it's a and, double shot. Yeah. Unless it's a very slow-moving movie, then I don't mind that, and it's just very little dialogue. Then you could, you know, yeah. you can absorb the images because it's all about, much of it is about images, right? right? Yeah, but I think dialogue is so important, though. It is, but I mean, so if are you, if the you Alfred, if, you get, if you get offered a role in a movie, aren't you thinking about what the dialogue is in the script, not the images? Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone gives you a script to work in a movie, you've done some mm -hmm. movies, then you would be looking at the dialogue, number one, right? You wouldn't be thinking, I wonder how beautiful visually, beautifully visually this, beautiful, well, I don't know what the wording is, but how well the, the, the visuals will look, how beautiful they are. Aren't you thinking about the dialogue? Well, I am thinking about, yeah, what are my lines yeah. and what am I going to do with the, them? Right, yeah, that's but the important it, part, not how... If somebody gives me the background of, you know, that's a big bonus. Um, What's the background? You mean like... Uh, well, you know, where are you? Are you on a cliff? Are you, on, oh, you, know, yeah. are you in a home room? <laughs> you know, <laughs> your space? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like visual stuff. Like, I like 2001 A Space Odyssey because it's mostly... There's probably any dialogue, and the dialogue is usually just like m nothing. I like just the visuals. Like it's two and a half hours of mostly just wonderful visuals. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of thing, kind of because I can kind of go into it like it's a meditation. So, but I, I yeah. still, I still like. Yeah, I guess when you're older now, you just don't want to do the double work of, of reading and watching at the same time. Well, there, was, that's a you made you more intense when you were younger. I think that's well. I, I think what i what my point was that i i kind of go through trends i never really did enjoy romantic comedy what but that's a, that's the that's the uh it's <laughs> the, the demographic is women <laughs> i know so you're outside and the box there i am totally outside the box wow Ugh. so you didn't like when harry met sally or annie hall or um i didn't mind seeing when harry met sally because it was because of the cultural references that you just have to see it so you know what people are talking about. Oh, right. So you only want to see but, it so everyone could, with the water cooler, you could discuss it. Well, yeah, so I would know what the references are and, and yeah. Did you see Return to but, Me? But Would then there's some that I just, that I have seen. Uh, have you seen Return to Me? No. Mm -hmm. with David Duchovny? Mm -mm. You know him? X-Files? David Duchovny? Yes. Oh, I know the actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Return yeah. to uh -huh. Me is, is, in my opinion, and Paula's opinion, if that counts for anything, is the best romantic comedy of the 21st oh, century. Oh, really? Of the 21st century. What makes it the best? It's because it has a really w w interesting concept, and then it's executed so well. Like, all the characters are so well defined, and they're all so funny, and it, they're all so charming, and it's so soulful, and it's so warm and touching and funny at the same time. It's just amazing. It's called Return to Me. So, I mean, I'm not saying you have to watch that. Obviously, I'm not well, saying you have to watch I, it. I might recommend that as your romantic I would entree watch into it, though, romantic if you, comedy. If you endorsed it. Return to it. me. Return to me. Uh -huh. Well, Paula turned me on to it. You know, I was like, and we actually met the director of it uh, last year in Chicago. And we told her, and I said, we said, oh, we're a big Return to Me fans. She's like, and she had her whole family with her, and they were all extras in the movie. She goes, here's the whole cast right here. <laughs> oh, how cool is so that? So she was all happy because we were saying, you know, her movie and her cast, her friends, her family was there, and they were in the movie. It was great. So but we'd actually seen now, it. We were big fans, and then we yeah. talked to the director. What a lucky. Now, see. It was a fluke. She was, you, in a, she was in a coffee uh, shop. No, a pancake house. Who was house. the director? Her name's Bonnie Hunt. She was in Jerry, oh, she was I know that. Actually, the actress, Bonnie Hunt? Yeah, she's oh, yeah. in Jerry Maguire. Uh -huh. and, yeah. See, now I would watch that because you just gave me an in-depth um, experience. Yeah. On my own, I might it might be lost on me. I don't know. No, I wouldn't be lost you on would you, but, just, yeah. but because you recommend it, that it's... It's real. If you, if you want to laugh and cry and have uh -huh. a wonderful, warm time for an hour and a half, it's really something. 
It's touching and moving and warm and funny. It's super funny too. Like so, the whole movie is really hilarious. Jim Belushi's in it, and he's really funny in this mm -hmm. one. So and Bonnie Hunt, it's, you know, but uh, it's really. It, and David Allen Greer, he's in it. He's hilarious. The, the uh, other actor. Um, so yeah, return. So man, I'm just saying, maybe that'll be the romantic comedy to. Like that will turn you on to romantic comedies. And you'll be part of the demographic finally. <laughs> Were you fighting that because you're female? So you're like, oh, I'm not enough to be like uh, the no, crowd. No, I just, I don't know. What's the genre you like? Do you have a certain genre you like? Uh, well, there's. I know you don't care about horror that much and you don't care about romantic comedies that much. Well, now. Depends on horror because that's a huge category. Huge. huge. You don't like you don't like lowbrow horror. <laughs> you better have something. What well, do you like? The Shining. Well, I loved Get Out. The oh, one that recently. Get Out. Yeah, just <laughs> did you feel like the, it blew it, all my circuits? It's, it, that it might be that movie is so that was str really. strong on race. It's unbelievable. They really he really got to the core of the race issue during this this era of Trump. Mm -hmm. And he's a comedian. What's his name? The guy, the guy from Ke Keegan and Peele. Is that what it is? Keegan Jordan, Peele? Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. Yeah. And he's, boy, I was really impressed by him. I mean, I, I watched the, the comedy show a few times, and I saw him in the Fargo TV series. But Jesus Christ, I mean, that was, that was intense. Very much so. I so would. you're right. That was, and I told Paula, mm -hmm. she, it's horror, so you shouldn't watch it because she can't take horror. Mm -hmm. She can't deal with it. It's like it's, like, it's really happening mm -hmm. to her. And I, but now I'm trying to get her to watch Get Out. I actually mentioned to her about two weeks ago, we're going to watch Get Out anyways because you need to see this. That is one of the most important movies of the last few years. But it wasn't horror, like, no, you know, not. guts and hearts no, being pulled last, out. And the, just until the end. Well, yeah, which is... Which is not really what the movie's not about. Even it's, not, that. it's not the last mm -hmm. few five minutes. It's the whole mm -hmm. thing. And even that, it was... As oh, far yeah, it's, as not, it's not terrible. As far as violence goes. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, so I think she can handle yeah. it. I'm gonna, yeah. It's actually the first time I list for her, and I just discussed it with her recently because I've already seen it three times. And I I'm do want to see it again. Oh, it's great. I'm actually writing a book about movies right now that I'm finishing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's called Movies 365, mm -hmm. and it's my, th my favorite 365 movies, one for each day of the year, of course, and... They're gonna, and it's going to be arranged from January 1st to December 31st, not chronologically, not alphabetically, not by producer, not by actor, and then it'll be... So January 1st will be The Apartment, which ends... The movie ends The Apartment on January 1st. Oh, so I'm going to start... Nice. Jan and then, of course, Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day will be February 2nd, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. And it'll be one for Halloween and how, you know, Christmas movies will be in December and... But I'm going to do it. Now, so I'm going to you're going to flip through the, my book, and you'll be able to just you won't know what's coming next because it's going to be by days, a day of the year. Uh huh. What I'm recommending for that day of the year, you know, like there's a movie called Bay of Angels, for instance, and it takes place in the beginning on August 8th. There's a calendar on the wall, so that's going the August 8th slot. Some of them are really kind of subtle, mm -hmm. but I'm finishing that up now. It's really a big. You're amazing. Oh, well, thanks. I mean, you're you're amazing writing too, one book Connie. after another, I and all up. the stuff that I love to read about. So now the apartment. I dedicated one of my talking? books to you. I know. All right, go it's ahead. It's been one of my biggest thrills. Yeah, that is. My, my, it was such a great nice. honor. Yeah. Well, I, I care about you. So now, but the apartment <laughs> is that's not a um, that would you maybe that's is that a romantic comedy? Yeah. So it is. I should be it's clear though. I think it's the kind that are just kind of pumped out now that are generated and oh, yeah, you know there's, with their There's tons of them. A lot of them are really dumbed down. Yeah, even Most the one of them are dumbed down. I read one and I took my daughter to it, uh, read a review and said it was very empowering to women and it right. was um, Was it really empowering? No. <laughs> And it was Amy Schumer. Oh God, she never, she's never empowering the women really because I feel pretty. I feel pretty. Yeah, and I. I mean, oh. the, whole, the whole point of it is I feel pretty. Like, can't you just? You don't need. You don't need to empower yourself that way because you got the. It's, it's, she's. she's I not hated em, it. She is not empowering the yeah. women at all because she's. Oh my looks, my looks, my. Well, yeah. you know that's not a good topic to make you to empower yeah, you. Yeah, that. How about personality and and what you accomplish in life. And, and real not superficial bullshit. Yeah. Plus, she does a lot of that that horrible raucous uh, humor. That really is that you know. Oh, I, I can do it too. The guys do it, and I do it also. That's uh -huh. what Amy Schumer. You know. And I should make that clear when I say, I should say nowadays. Yeah, romantic you're right. comedy. Good point. Because the apartment is a because that is a is serious so-called serious romantic comedy. It's, it's an adult romantic comedy. It's not dumbed down it's for teenagers. It's brilliant not stupid. and beautiful. And, yeah, and, and it is a romantic comedy, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that one's, but you've already seen that. So that one, Return to Me, is a real good one, too, like I said. Mm -hmm. so that, but that's not like The Apartment, but it's still... Damn. Well, here's another one. You said Harry Met Sally, so I thought yeah, it was like Pretty Harry Woman. I, I was oh, not a huge fan. Oh, she's a prostitute. <laughs> like, like, you know, that's... Well, that, it would have been romantic. better had it 
have been, you know, okay, she, How about she's her? a prostitute. Let's get down with this yeah, they concept. Don't even do that. It was it's, so it's sanitized. So glossed over. Oh my! It's the most sanitized possible thing. Well, it's Gary Marshall. He's from Happy Days. Mm-hmm. He did Happy Days. I mean, how Gary Marshall never never made an edgy movie in his life. But everything it, he does did when he was alive was, oh, he's yeah. a prostitute. She's a, of course, she's a prostitute with a heart of gold. But it's worse than that. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm falling in love with a prostitute. Oh my God. And then they did that other movie where they, he, you know, he, she ran away at the altar. Mm-hmm. Runaway Bride. Yeah. Well, let's bring Richard Gere and the prostitute back together. Well, she's not a prostitute this time, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff so, like that, you're right. And there's, well, and there's no a predictability about it. And, blah, 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 blah. And, and, uh, and it's not to say that I'm a snob because no. I love junk food. You know, what I call junk food films. Like what? You know, just to sit through and... Is there an example of, junk, of a junk food film oh, that you yes. think of? Oh, yes. Um, like one example? Rami and, I think it's Rami and Michelle's uh, High School Reunion. Oh, you like I that love one. that, that is movie. Junk. <laughs> I love Though it. Though I will say that the two of them... I do like those revenge, like, kind of high school <laughs> revenge movies. That is junk food. <laughs> Though the fact that they're all glammed up and blonde through the whole movie... Mm-hmm. Especially Mira Servino. She's, you know, when she gets all glammed up and blonde. And she's an Academy mm-hmm. Award winning actress. She won the Academy Award. Oh, and Award. I love, uh, yes, yeah, Mighty Aphrodite. Woody See, Allen. like all love, the, uh, all the uh, vulgarity in that. They're, that's vulgar to the math. And that's about a prostitute. <laughs> yes. And yeah, she won, a, she won the Academy Award for that. I adored her in both those So you like, the, you like her fake voice. <laughs> you like her vulgarity. Oh, you do like junk. If I, though. oh, you know, if, if I so could. So you like Woody. Any, I would have loved to. That's a role that I, you know, you I would played? like to play that. That kind of stuff. Really, but that's a. But I would never it would get that, you know. But I mean, you know, I point out we just said that that's a prostitute in the movie who's, who and it's really it's really a vulgar movie, even though it's Woody Allen. Well, of course he's vulgar in a way. She has that heart of gold thing going on. So you wouldn't <laughs> mind playing a heart of gold prostitute with a great script by Woody Allen? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Do you like Woody Allen? Despite yeah, I guess Besides I, that, besides the fact that he's a harasser, I, uh, an abuser, you uh, know. I, he married his uh, his uh, girlfriend's uh, adopted daughter. <laughs> the jury is still out on that, though. I mean, they're there's both, still, both they're family members are coming and they're oh, yeah, conflicting. Oh yeah, Ronan said, "Wait this a minute, one, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Maybe he's not my father." He says in his thirties. Wait a minute, I don't think Woody Allen's my father. How about, he tells he says in his thirties? <laughs> it's a little late. Oh, I don't. I don't know if he's my father. Mia, my my mother said he. But uh, her him saying that Woody's not my father means that Mia is saying. Oh, I had an affair behind your father's back. <laughs> I never told you about it until you were in your 30s. What a, oh, it's like, it's like Chinatown. It's my, just my too pa, insane. My mother, my sister, my sister, my mother, my, my brother, my daughter, my sister, my daughter. It is insane. Yeah. So that's, I think that's interesting. That's the kind of, you could actually, so you don't mind playing something edgy, like a, like a, you would not mind playing something edgy like a prostitute with vulgarity as long as you have a, it's great dialogue and, and it's smart. Oh yeah. It's not, you're not against. Oh god. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you would do anything edgy wise, actress wise, as long as it's a good script and it's smart. Mm-hmm. You don't care. I don't care. I would do anything to get the part too. Wow. But you you don't mean anything, <laughs> do. do you? <laughs> you don't mean anything, Connie. In Connie, case do Woody you? Allen's listening, but he's not. I'm too old for him. But so. But you wouldn't do anything. You're just saying that for a fact, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't kill you. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> so you don't like you, you you don't like romantic comedy. Really, you don't really like. Well, horror. we made the distinction. Like war, you don't like we war don't. Movies. We don't it's like not war movies, right? You don't like war movies. Can't be that. Um, we don't like those formulaic nowadays. Are you saying romantic we like the, like the Queen? Like comedies. we are not amused. <laughs> No, saying, you don't like them either. Oh, yeah. No, neither of us are saying we yeah. for both of us. Yeah. I don't think yeah. anybody really does. I think they're, they're good just, for 12-year-old girls. They're fantasies. That I probably would have loved them when I, you know. But are they empowering those young girls, those young 12. ladies? But are they empowering those young girls and young ladies to be all they can be? Or are they, are they feeding into the American nightmare? <laughs> I mean, what do you think about the whole Me Too movement? Well... It's led, it all came out through the biggest producer in Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein. I know. And, you know, go girls. I, I, I think it's wonderful. And I also think that, you know, I just hope it doesn't get carried away to the point where, I don't know, it somehow backfires. Not that I've even given it that much thought how it could. But um, Isn't it weird how great art and scumbaggery can go together? Like, Harvey... Very tasteful in his movie choices and what he produced and what he bought. I know. Very tasteful, yeah, yeah. extremely tasteful, and yet 
tastes less in real life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw um, a Netflix uh, comedian, um, and her name escapes me at the moment, but it was called Nanette. Right. And she goes on about um, Picasso, and she rips, she, she actually rips a lot of um, 20th century artists um, because of their misogyny and his relationship with a 17 year old girl. And, um, you know, she had just valid points. He was 40, she's 17. Somebody wrote they were both in their prime. And she's like, no, no woman is in her prime when she's 17. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's, a t I'm glad it's out there. Um, for for a lot of reasons for for women's protection and all that so um but um what do you think but of as far as what kids are what young people are watching nowadays i don't really know what their taste is like i don't really know where I'm totally, if uh, i had a teenage i probably i would know where they're going to films i don't know what they're i seeing. have no idea what's going I, on I with, with what young seeing. people I couldn't tell you about and the what's empowering or, them. I, I do know that because of teenagers, especially and people in their twenties, the Oscars have now added the new category for 2019 of best popular movie. Did you know that? What is it? The best popular movie. Oh. So they're going to take all the blockbusters, the most popular movies of the year, and they're going to put them in a category, and whoever you know the best one, because the actual best movie usually is artsy. Or weird, or not a not a money maker, or not a big money maker. So now they're going to put all the Star Wars and Captain America and Avengers. And what do you think of that? Is that kind of sad? They're, now they're dumbing down the Academy Awards. Yeah, for artistry. I kind of thought that's what they. I thought popularity always played into it. Did it not? Well, it used to play into it more, and that was, and also because, of course, in the old days. There were popular movies, very popular movies that were very artistic, like The Godfather. Mm -hmm. But that's oh. that's kind of faded out now. Mm -hmm. And as Star Wars, it's gotten worse and worse in the last 40 years since Star Wars came out. And they're they're finding there's all these superhero movies. And of course, the Black Panther will now be uh, you know allowed to go into the the most popular category. But before, it might not have got a Best Picture. Now. And how did how well who? So it's box office receipts. That's how you. Know well, they're going to they're going to choose. You're going to choose the most popular uh, box office, but then they're going to they're gonna say which one's the best one artistically out of the popular ones, hoping to get more people to watch. More kids, uh, not the old people. The old people are not saying, "Oh, I really wish they would add Captain America and the Avengers <laughs> to the." You know, it's sad to me. <laughs> it's the dumbing down of America. It's then again, our our president's been in a lot of movies. Well, yeah. He was in Home Alone too. There's a yeah. What do you think of his acting? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him in anything. You know, so he's been in, he's been in many. He's been in like 27 different things, including TV shows. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, three were straight to straight to video by Playboy. Oh, movies, I think I did see a clip of him in one sitcom. Well, it whatever. It was if you got a, a smart a walk on. If, you, if you got a smart script by a great director. Would you would you work in a movie with Donald Trump? Would you do love scenes with Donald Trump? <laughs> oh hell no! So even even if you got a big salary, <laughs> and it was a major motion picture by Woody Allen, and it was and, and it was Mighty Aphrodite, and it was Donald was playing the Woody Allen role, and you were playing the Meryl Savino role. No, no. Wow, you hate him that much, huh? I wouldn't even want to slap him. I wouldn't want my skin to touch him. Wow. But. I don't so, want to go there with well, this, tell me about this fun conversation tell me we about were this, having. <laughs> don't tell me about this uh, this movie you're in that you told me before we started well, recording. I it's wanted, William Fitchner. What's his name? Oh, um, Cold Brook. What, by, it was written. Um, That's impressive. Co-written that. by William Fickner and, and one oh, of Fickner, his friends oh, uh, came to Kane Devore, and it stars William Fickner and it's directed by William Fickner and well, it also it co-stars William with his best friend uh, Kim Coates. So, so this is your um, biggest moment in cinema so part. far, or you had bigger moments in cinema? Um, my, well, that's a nice little part. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I hope I, I hope actor. I didn't get cut out. I mean, I could have. Oh. I don't know if I'm still in it. It hasn't premiered yet. No. It's it's um it's a, it's a I think it's a little funny part. Um, so you talked him into so it. You met him and talked him into it. Kind of. <laughs> Let you use all your charm then. <laughs> um, you didn't have to do anything though to get the role, right? You just. Just, I told was, him I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, you were just, you were just very I, enthusiastic. I was, yeah, I was very enthusiastic. And so one day he said, oh, he was telling me who's who, and um, he said, and you're Virginia. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Um, Is that your biggest moment in cinema, being with him? I mean, acting? Or oh, yeah. Been, uh, been, the, well. It's, it's pretty high. 
I think so. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you weren't enough. I'm moving on up after you. It was, yeah, after working was, with me, you've gone higher now. You're, I, you're, 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 well, now since your movie came out, if you do another one, I'll have to be involved because you, you know, I'm getting just, better and you're, better. You're, you're, I noticed you're, that people are asking your me. Your ranks are going up. Well, I noticed ranks. that people since the Catcher in the Rye with Diamonds movie that I made, people are asking me. I met, I saw Joe Giambra last week.